Hey everyone, welcome to a Friday special having event. Um, so it's been interesting. Uh, the BTC fees are increasing like crazy right now. I think it's mainly because of the runes uh, protocol that's being out there right now. That's increasing the fees for well a lot of the miners, obviously, which is a great thing here, which we want to see. But it's just outstanding how much those things have gone up. Uh, the actual having block was like, we'll go into it, but it was a huge amount of BTC that was actually put into that block. Uh, we'll go over all the recent blocks that have been mined recently as well, after the having block. Uh, and those have been huge as well. Uh, we'll see how long this continues going forward for the miners. And there's really no news on the miners today as far as anything happening with them, so we're not going to get really into that. We we'll, might discuss a little bit as far as what this means going forward for the miners. Um, you know, I think the BTC fees are going to be a larger portion than they have been in the past. Uh, but we'll get into that and we'll get into your guys' questions as always. And then we are 1,413 days away from the next having event, which is going to be obviously in 2028 sometime. Uh, okay. But as always, you guys know the drill here. This is not financial advice for entertainment only. Please do your own research. I'm investing in the following coins and companies for full disclosure. And if you enjoy this type of content, hit the like button, subscribe. Helps me out tremendously. Also ring that bell, I guess, and you get notified when I put out videos. Uh, I'm also, uh, let's see. Corrections will be posted to Discord, YouTube, Twitter, as always. I am not paid by any uh, public Bitcoin mining company for full disclosure as well. Okay, so let's take a look at what's going on here with Bitcoin really quick today. Bitcoin had a wild day today as well. It was actually down quite a bit uh, early on today. Uh, we can see here, let's go to, to like the one hour chart. Uh, so you can see here we had basically in the morning or when was this? Uh, actually last night, right? Last night we had this uh, at approximately 7 o'clock my time at least. A big concern to fall and it fell pretty hard and then it fell into uh right around nine o'clock it fell all the way down to a low of 59,573 and then it bounced and it bounced pretty good here going forward into it and obviously we've bounced way higher and we've continued to come down so this is obviously a pretty good sign that we are kind of maintaining or at least holding that support level that we've seen in the past year because if we look at the daily again here we can see where we kind of bottomed out here and was pretty much where we bottomed out on this was on Wednesday, right? We bottomed out there, we bounced off of that, and now we are actually right on the line of 63,700, somewhere right around there. So that's a good sign here. We bounced off of it, and hopefully we stay above that going forward. We'll see, right? Time will only tell us. On that, miners had a really good day today as well, which was kind of nice to see as well. Uh, we can see here that the miners were all pretty much in the green, except for two. We had Digihost down, DMG down a little bit here, but we had some miners that did really well here. Marathon was up 9.78%. Who else was up pretty nicely? Cores was up 7.64. We had Clean Spark up 5.98. Uh, and it's just a continuation of what we saw basically from yesterday on a lot of the miners, which was kind of nice as well. So maybe the miners have kind of bottomed out. We'll see. Um, we're obviously in Friday right now, end of the week. So we won't have anything until Monday coming up uh, after the weekend here. But we'll see what Bitcoin does. Bitcoin right now is down a little bit here, not much. Uh, but obviously, the having event was the main thing here. So let's take a look at that. Here's the having block right here, um, block number 8,400,000, 840,000, sorry. That's the block here, and that block brought in 37.6 BTCs in fees. I mean, that's huge. So the total block was 40.75 BTCs. So somebody that via BTC, that's the pool that mined it, they got all of that right now. So we'll see if how via BTC uh, distributes that out to the miners that are in that pool. I think they're probably going to do a, obviously a share, uh, shared uh, split on that for everybody that's on that pool. So anybody that was mining on that pool is going to be doing really well, obviously, on Friday. And then we also see here that uh, going forward after that block, we saw quite a high transaction fee as well for all these miners or these blocks here. But you can see here that Antpool has done actually really well. You can see Antpool has gotten one, two, three, four... Uh, let's see, four. Four of the last probably 10, 10 12 blocks or something like that after that. Uh, 11 blocks after that. So they've done pretty well here. And looking at the block transaction fees here, we're seeing that we're having huge impact on that. So the first block after the halving event was 4.4 BTC, right? Uh, right now the minor reward is 3.125. Add that on top of the uh, BTC fees. And you got the total subsidy plus fees, 7.61 BTC is kind of like what they're getting now or before the having event, right? Look at the next block here, 6.9, almost 7 BTC. Now they're getting 10 BTC. 
in total on Foundry. You got Anpol getting 19.19 BTC. It is just crazy going on here. You got 27 BTC in total going 24 BTC in fees here. And I think a lot of this stuff is through runes, right? We'll see how long this can last. But in the meantime, in the short term at least, it's really good for the miners. Um, you got 32 total BTC fees plus subsidy. On that one, you got, let's see, take a look at this one over here. You got 26. I mean, fees are huge addition to what they're getting right now. 20.81, 15.3, 12.59. So it's starting to come down a little bit here uh, as we go forward. 20.7, I mean, it's still huge compared to what we were thinking the miners were going to get 3.125 plus some uh, Bitcoin transaction fees. How long will this last? I don't know. Uh, right now, everything is kind of up in the air. Uh, with the runes protocol going live and everything else, uh, this one's already got 16.25 BTC fees, right? That's the next block that's going to be mined, potentially. One after that, 11.46. Then you got 8.42, and that's still increasing here. You got 6.01. The further you get out, the lower they get. But as they get closer to being actually mined, it seems like it's increasing. Um, speaking on some of the spaces on Twitter today, it seems like that might continue for a couple of weeks. Uh, we don't know if they're going to be this elevated going forward. But nonetheless, this is obviously a huge benefit to the miners that we obviously track here, that we invest in. And they're going to have a much better time than they did last having cycle with all of this interest and higher transaction fees and everything else that's, that we're seeing right now. Okay, uh, as far as what's next for the miners going forward. Right now, we know that the standard reward is going to be 3.25 or 3.125, sorry for the block reward, plus whatever additional transaction fees. We've obviously seen transaction fees going up um, for a lot of the miners or in general on the network. Over the last couple of months, we saw 10% additional transaction fees in November of last year, 20% in December, we came down a little bit uh, in January to like 10%. Then we came down to about 5% in February. March was about 4.4, roughly right around there. So those are going to obviously have a much bigger impact going forward. If they stay at least at like 5% five, at five, uh, five per, five pre-halving, after the halving, it's basically like 10% being added onto it. So I think it, that's going to be a huge uh, boom for them all. Uh, and obviously the miners that we cover here are BitDeer, BitDigital, BitFarm, Cypher, CleanSpark, Core, Hive, Hut8, Iron, Marathon, Riot, and TerraWolf. All those guys, I think, will do pretty well. Uh, the first quarter for the miners will be really good because we've had Bitcoin price going up. Some of the miners that hodl also will do really well because of the appreciation in Bitcoin going up in value. They can use the new FASB rules as well. That's going to be a, a big boom for them as far as EPS per shares. And a lot of these guys were also growing in that time frame. So in general, as long as the BTC fees stay, I think, at least a 10% or higher, it's not going to be that bad for the miners going forward, especially the ones that are growing the ones that are looking to uh, grow forward into 2024, 2025 as well, they will do really well. And especially if Bitcoin continues to possibly go up, right? We don't know where Bitcoin's going to go, but based on historical events, we know that Bitcoin has happened to, let me see if I can maybe go to weekly, monthly. Here we go. Here's the last having event that we had here, right? Bitcoin, one, two, three, four, five months, and it was going up slowly, and then it just went parabolic here. Right prior to that in 2016 having event, we had Bitcoin kind of going up slowly here for several months here, and then it finally went parabolic to 19,000, something like that. Right, so we're expecting the same thing to happen this time. It might be a little bit faster because we do have the spy Bitcoin ETFs, we also have the Hong Kong ETFs coming online here later on this month as well. That might be a catalyst that drives everything up much, much higher than where we've been in the past, at least. Right. We've also noticed that this having cycle, for the first time ever, we've had Bitcoin price actually reach a much, a new all-time high compared to the pri prior cycles. That's never happened before, right? A new all-time high before the having event, that's never happened before. So it's a different cycle. It's a different animal altogether. And I'm excited. I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited what's going to happen with Bitcoin, with the Bitcoin miners and everything else. Um, I'm just, oh, I'm ecstatic, actually, if you want to say that. Uh, I think the next couple weeks to potentially a month or two might be a little turbulent still. But I think after that, things should start to um, improve things. Uh, but that all depends on Bitcoin. If Bitcoin goes up really high, really fast, that's going to obviously be a boom for the miners, everything else. Uh, but right now, what we're seeing with the transaction fees, 
on the block, uh, on the mempool and things like that, I would be hesitant to buy any Bitcoin or transfer any Bitcoins or anything like that. So I hope you guys transfer those into your uh, hardware wallets or cold storage or anything like that where you're not needing that right now because the fees are just so high right now that it doesn't really make any sense to um, transact BTC that way, right? If you're moving it into an exchange or off the exchange or anything like that, I would hold off for a little bit until those fees maybe uh, subside a little bit here. But I mean, it's a lot of money being made for the miners right now, which is a good thing, obviously. Okay. So obviously the having is behind us, I think, which is a good thing. Which then in turn obviously means that the best part is still ahead of us, I think, for the next 12 to 18 months potentially, depending how fast Bitcoin actually goes up. If Bitcoin goes up relatively quickly here, which it might because of the difference in the halving that we've had, and, uh, it's just a different, uh, how can I put this? It's a different all around experience that we're seeing this time around that we haven't seen before. So, like I said, I'm excited, I'm ecstatic about what's going to possibly happen forward, and it might be breaking our some of the thoughts that we had as far as where the miners could go as far as price, where Bitcoin could possibly go as well, uh, but only time will tell. Okay, so let's get into your guys' Q&A. I just wanted to do this really quick with a live Q&A for you guys in the live stream. Going over this, obviously, this is a monumental achievement for Bitcoin and Bitcoin miners, I think. So let's get into the Q&A here side of things. Not that one. I wanted this one. Uh, and then we'll see what kind of questions you guys have on things going forward uh, or anything like that. A couple of things that I did, um, I wanted to talk about this also. A couple of things that I learned, at least through um, the spaces today on Twitter, which was hosted by Luxor. They had uh, Taylor from CleanSpark. They had Ben from BitFarms. They also had on there um, Aiden from Hive as well, and Sue from Hot8. It was a really interesting space on that, and a lot of great questions as far as growth. Uh, uh, what else was there? Growth, uh, also, oh gosh, I'm trying to draw, I'm drawing a blank on the name for it. Um, it's uh, third party, mm, I'm drawing a blank right now, but basically exposure to third party issues potentially, like going overseas or something like that, right? Uh, ben mentioned that they have had better success in like Argentina, Paraguay, uh, less issues with governments than they have had in Canada and the United States, which was kind of interesting to see, or at least here. And then we also had Taylor come out and say that they might potentially announce something that they're going to be looking at other countries as well, right? Whereas before Taylor with CleanSpark, we were expecting them to be kind of U.S. domiciled pretty much for everything that they're going to be doing. But it's interesting to note that they, he said potentially. They didn't mean they, they're going to do it, but there's the potential for them to look elsewhere as well. Um, if you guys missed that, I think that's been recorded through Luxor. Take a um, take a listen to it. It's very informative. Um, and we had a lot of, obviously, great people on there from different mining companies. So do check that out. Okay, back to Q&A side of things. Uh, let me see here. What do we have here? Let's see. Okay. Uh, do you see ASIC miners prices going down in the near future? No. Um, I think with Bitcoin price going up, I think we'll start seeing prices go up a little bit. The only reason they might not go down is because I think Bit Bitmain is going to want to try to maintain their dominance over the market, right? We have a lot of entrants in there in the space right now. We have Bitdeer coming out with their own miners. We have also uh, Our Dine, which is backed by Marathon coming out with miners as well. And I think Bitmain is going to be pretty aggressive on pricing on that. So we may see some prices go up, but I don't know if they're going to go up uh, too much. Maybe not like we've seen in the past where they were $100 per terahash in, you know, like the peak of 2021. I don't know if that's going to happen. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Wait a minute. Where did I miss it? Uh, do, do, do. Okay. Do you see CleanSpark getting to $80 a share of the cycle? I think they can get close to that. That's kind of my conservative target. I think my conservative target was $70 for them, and that's conservative, like I said. But I think it could go up higher than that, depending on where Bitcoin goes. Um, so it is possible, I think, but it all depends on Bitcoin. Let's see. Is the BTC miners crash over? Uh, I don't... 
I think the crash is maybe over, but I think we may be trading sideways a little bit for a little bit longer bef uh, unless Bitcoin starts going up. It all depends on Bitcoin. Bitcoin starts going up to 70,000, 75,000, 80,000. The miners will follow at that point because it's going to be more profitable for those miners at that point. And I think a lot of the having event and the reduction in revenue has been already priced into the stocks of the miners because they've come down 40, you know, 30, 40, 50% on some of these guys. Uh, do you think BitFarms could be lagging due to the fact that big U.S. money BlackRock is not heavy investor in them? Um, I think it's just the ATM uh, more so than anything else. Uh, whenever we saw that with CleanSpark, with other companies as well, whenever they had an ATM that was open still, the stock did not do, do well because people are just afraid of dilution, right? Uh, so when they announce, and hopefully they announce soon, we don't know when, when they announce that they are fully funded to 21 exahash, at that point, I think the stock will do really well. But in the meantime, with that lingering question being out open still, I think it's just going to be, um, depending on Bitcoin, where Bitcoin goes. I think if Bitcoin goes up, they might go up as well. But until they renounce that they are 21 exahash fully funded, they might uh, be underperforming a little bit. Uh, let's see. The question is, Rise Facility, the largest in the world uh, in Texas and running. Uh, they are going to be the possibly the largest, I think, one gigawatt of potential electricity that they can have there. Uh, currently, they are only energized 400 megawatts or 100 megawatts. I can't remember exactly. Uh, but they're getting there, right? They're building that out. They still have to build out a lot of buildings to get to where they want to get to. Um, so that's going to take some time. Let's see. Uh, hi, Seb. Are you selling your shares as you reach your uh, set target? Which stocks will you be focusing next? Give at least some names already in your target list. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I'll be probably... Hmm, I'll be looking probably when like CleanSpark gets like close to $70. I may sell some at that point, depending on where Bitcoin is uh, at that point as well. So it's kind of a combination of where Bitcoin prices are, where the miner stocks are as far as prices is concerned. I'll start looking into that. And then where I'm going to do going forward, I don't really know yet. Um... Uh, Right, I don't know where the interest rates are going to go, which then would dictate if I wanted to get, get into like EV stocks, potentially like Rivian, Tesla, or something like that. Uh, if those do start coming down, that might be an attractive play there. Uh, the other option was for me to get into real estate maybe, uh, something like that. Um, I still think real estate is down from where it should be, but that's based on the interest rate. So if interest rates come down, that might be a little bit more attractive there as well. I'll have to do some a lot more research on that, those types of things. Uh, let's see here. Options on Cypher. I don't do options. Um, I just buy the regular shares of the companies and hold them for a while. I dollar cost average in. And that's kind of the way I do it. Uh, but there are people obviously doing options, doing day trading on these guys and everything else. I don't do that. I don't have the time. Uh, and I don't do options because I want to sleep well at night. Options are definitely more risky. Uh, let's see here. Question, how would you identify the top or if this is an accelerated cycle? Uh, we could possibly see a couple of things happen. Um, we could look at some charts. Uh, we have the charts from, um, what is his name? Uh, it's a BTC something. I can't remember it right now on Twitter. A 1 million BTC or something like that. I can't remember his um, handle right now. But there's some charts from him. There's also the power law chart that we could take a look at as well. So there's some charts that we'll keep an eye on to see where things are going. We'll take a look at like the RSI on Bitcoin, where that's going on the weekly, monthly, uh, daily, things like that. Where is that all heading uh, to possibly see where things are getting a little frothy, right? And then also if you have like your uh, garbage man saying to you, hey, are you buying Bitcoin? That might be the top there, right? Uh, when you have people that you don't normally expect to be talking about Bitcoin, that might be a top. Um, so <laughs> we'll be keeping an eye on that. Uh, let's see here. Between Riot, Clean Spark, uh, which you like to buy today and why I will buy Riot personally? I think, I mean, Riot's beaten down quite a bit here, right? Because they haven't had great production. Um, so that's one way to take a look at it. If you're looking for growth going into this year, I think they're both kind of looking to get into the same amount, right? I think it's saying 31 exahash, something like that, 30 exahash. Spark is saying 32 X hash by the end of the year as well. So they're both really well into that same kind of spot there. Uh, but it just then depends on uh, uh, management, how well they've operated, how well they've executed and things like that. So you have to take those into 
into account as well. And um, uptime. Uptime is a big thing as well. So there's a lot of things you could take a look at. But I think, like, if you get into a Clean Spark Marathon, Riot, BitFarms, Iron, any of those, even Cypher or Terrible for something like that, I think you'll do very well because Bitcoin going up in price will do lift up all boats, basically. Uh, let's see. First having, what should we expect the price, the pricing the first couple of weeks going forward? It might be... Like I said before, it might be a little stagnant as far as pricing in the miners uh, going forward, at least in the next couple of weeks, unless we continue to see a huge amounts of Bitcoin transaction fees being added in and Bitcoin price going up. If that happens, then I think uh, miners will follow as well. Uh, so we'll have to keep an eye on it. But I don't expect huge moves in Bitcoin and Bitcoin miners until maybe a couple of weeks, a couple of months out after this. But if we have an accelerated cycle, we could see that a lot faster, obviously. Uh, let's see. Is the main strategy of most mining companies post having to have more S21 miners and just mine more? Uh, yeah, uh, well, it's to have better miners, more efficient miners, better uptime and things like that. If they can do that, they will be obviously more profitable uh, than having older miners. So that's kind of the strategy of all the miners. Uh, let's see. Doesn't Iron have an edge due to their renewable energy? Uh, Iron uses, um, while well, they're getting to Texas, they have renewable energy there, but so does Marathon, so does Riot, so does Bitdeer, so does Cypher, so does CleanSpark. All these guys have renewable energy in some sort, or at least uh, zero carbon or close to zero carbon as possible. Um, so there's really nothing there. Um, if you remember a couple of years back, we were hearing about uh, companies talking about SG, what is it, S-E-G, S-G-E, uh, whatever that was, that uh, term there. But basically they were saying that Bitcoin that's mined efficiently and mined zero carbon or something like that should have a premium. We never saw that, right? Nobody's going to pay a premium on Bitcoin that's mined uh, through S-G-E or something like that. Uh, could you pull up your break even for each of the miners post having? Um, so we're talking about the spreadsheet here. Let me pull that up right now. Where is it at? Break even. Uh, and this is just rough numbers, right? So trying to get as best estimated numbers that I can on this. Uh, let me go here. So here's the numbers right there on everything. And that is what I could figure out from the quarterly results. Like I said before, these are the, um, you know, we're looking at Q4 numbers and trying to extrapolate the data from that into the numbers that we have right now for Terahash or Exahash for the miners. It's not going to be exact, but it's close right within maybe 15, 20% or something like that. Uh, probably to the downside, I think. Uh, some of these might be a little high. So there it is on that one. Uh, let's see. Uh, historically, how far after the having event does Bitcoin start uh, running? So if you look at this chart here, let me go back to this one. You can see here that in the 2020 having event, it took about one, two, three, four months and Bitcoin started going parabolic, right? The prior cycle in 2016, we had at least probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, eleven, tw 10 to 12 months after it started going right parab parabolic at that point. Uh, so there are different cycles in the way that things work out. Okay. Uh, not that one. I wanted to go here and then I want to go here. Okay. Let's see. Uh, if runes, fungible tokens, and BTC attract capital, how would uh, sustained fees of 50% of block reward affect your miles? Greatly. Um, because my miles are based on basically zero fees being added into it. Um, so if they can get 50% added into it, so now you're looking at approximately, what is that, about 4.5 BTC per reward, something like that. That would be huge um, uh, impact on it. Uh, let's see here. Especially a great video. As always, talk to me. Uh, thoughts on BitFarm seems like an amazing deal to me. Are you pricing tar Are your price targets still the same for BTC? Uh, happy having. Uh, price targets for BTC, my original price targets were 180000 for this cycle, right? But because we have the spot Bitcoin ETFs, now the Hong Kong spot Bitcoin ETFs as well, it could go higher than that. I mean, some are saying 250, 300,000. I don't know where it's going to go. I'd be happy if we get to 180,000 with Bitcoin this time around. Uh, but BitFarms, obviously, uh, they appear to me like they're way undervalued because 
they got the ATM out there. They have a change in the CEO as well. So that's having an impact on the stock as well. Uh, but otherwise, their operations, efficiency uptime is really good. Efficiency is getting better because they're getting newer miners. They're also growing in uh, Paraguay, places like that in Argentina, which is going to be a huge boom for them, I think, going forward, especially in the next, uh, what are we at, eight months before before the end of the year, right? And if they can get close to the 21 exit hash by the end of the year, that's going to be huge for them, I think. Um, and right now, it's just basically trust but verify. So we need to see them actually execute on that growth plan going forward. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, did you check out Rex's video on BitFarms where he goes over some of the uncertainties surrounding Paraguay and their openness to Bitcoin mining operations continuing to run there? Yeah, I did uh, take a look at the video. Um, you know, he provided obviously a lot of the possible. Uh, how can I put this? Um, possible cautionary things, right? Uh, but he also didn't provide a lot of the good stuff that they're going on, where they paid off their debt, they're growing to 21 extra hash, 3x from where they are right now. And then also, I was on a spaces call with uh, Ben from BitFarms, and he said that Paraguay and Argentina, some of the other places that they were at, they're actually, actually seeing less uh, issues with governmental issues than they are seeing here with uh, in Canada or US. I thought that was surprising, right? So I see that as potentially um, a positive there potentially, right? If they don't see the issues that they're having here with US and Canada, some of the regulations and things like that, taxes going back and forth on the mines and things like that. Um, uh, but we'll have to see, obviously, right? They've been in that uh, Paraguay for probably what now, two years, three years, I think, something like that. Uh, so I think they know the jurisdiction there. I think they know the government there. And they're, I think they're pretty comfortable with it. And we're seeing, obviously, other miners getting into it as well. So I'm a little bit less concerned on that side of things, especially after hearing uh, Ben speak. So if you guys check out the space, it was uh, hosted by Luxor. Check them out on Twitter. They, I mean, it was probably a couple hours long, but they had a bunch of great speakers. Uh, ben was from Bit, uh, Bitfarms from there. And then you had Taylor from CleanSpark, Sue from Hut8, and you had um, Patrick joined from Hut8. Um, uh, gosh, Terrell as well. So a lot of great spe speakers there. Check it out. Um, okay, why has basically all miners been lagging except for CleanSpark? CleanSpark was lagging for a long time, even in last year. It didn't start going really nicely or parabolically a little bit until probably what was the fall, I think it was. And they were lagging in 2023. They were lagging in 2022. As you guys, many of you guys have been watching me since, uh, what, probably the fall of 2021 when I started covering the miners and things like that. Uh, and then I got into CleanSpark in January, February of 2022. Um, and the reasons I got into it, because they obviously performed well. They had great uptime, great execution. Uh, you know, they set their targets and they reached their targets. That's why I was getting into CleanSpark at that point. And even at that point, the stock was doing uh, nowhere near as good as some of the other miners was being beaten down more so and then when miners were actually running they weren't running as hot right uh, but i st still continue to dollar cost average into them and it's kind of the same thing i'm seeing with bitfarms here right now uh they got the atm right uh, cleanspark had the atm that kept them down and then when cleanspark came out with the atm being or the atm used up or being fully funded to 16 actually hash the stock just took off um so i'm kind of expecting the same thing with bitfarms we'll see uh but that's kind of what i'm seeing the same kind of uh thing happening right now with them uh, let's see question do you think uh, energy green energy mining is attractive well all the miners want to say that they're green right in the form of that they're not contributing to more carbon footprint uh, so whether it's nuclear whether it's uh, solar wind hydro or things like that i think it's all great uh, because then it also doesn't really give any ammunition to the government to say, you know, you're polluting the air or something like that, or local communities or something like that. Um, so I think that is good for them. Uh, opinion on Cypher. I like Cypher. Um, it's more so than when they had, obviously, a lot more shares owned by Bitfury. Uh, now that that's kind of come down quite a bit, that's nice to see that. They do have great cost of power. Uh, good growth plan going forward. I wish it was more towards 2024. Um, they do have the option to buy miners in 2024, uh, but that's if they build out their infrastructure. But the order that they have right now for the miners is not until 2025 sometime. So I'd like to see that. Uh, let's see. 
Uh, why is the bid farms cost to mine so higher compared to other miners? Do you think their cost will come down significantly if they meet their projected goals? Yeah, so I'm, I'm using the numbers based on an older fleet that they have, right? So they've been installing some of the newer miners here recently, uh, which will lower their overall cost. Uh, and then as their hash rate grows, that will also lower their overall cost. Because you need to get to a certain point of scale in these miners in order to combat the cost of SG&A, other costs, things like that. You need scale, basically. And that's what they're working towards, is getting that scale at 21x hash by the end of the year. Um, so as we, as we, as they install more miners, newer miners, their efficiency is going to improve. Their cost to mine is going to also decrease as well at that point. Uh, does iron have an edge due to renewable energy? No, they're, they're all using renewable energy for some part. Uh, Marathon, riots, all in there. There's really no edge at, at that point. The only thing that, uh, might be as far as renewable energy is the concern there is, um, Wind only blows at certain times. The sun only shines at certain times, right? So those are some of the concerns there as well as, yeah, you're using renewable energy, but you're not being able to use that for the full 24 hours a day, right? So at certain points, they're using something else. Um, so I don't see that as a benefit to anybody. Uh, ben, uh, Paraguay ban on illegal miners is Good news for bit farms because we'll remove illegal mining activities, bringing the... Okay, that was a question. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, we also had saw a letter being sent to this um, government there from... It was a congressman. I don't know what they call him over there. But it was basically that they stated that the government should incentivize Bitcoin mining instead of selling the electricity to um, Brazil, I think it is. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it might be Brazil. Uh, let's see here. Hong Kong is adopting spot Bitcoin ETFs. Would it be competing with US Bitcoin ETF like our, uh, ARBK or IBIT? Uh, I don't think it's competing, right? Um, if you got people in the United States and other places that use, uh, that exchange on the US stock exchanges, they're going to stick with the US stock uh, ones, the ones that are in kind of um, in China and things like that. And um, what's the proper way to say it? Um, Asian markets, right? I think in the Asian markets, they'll use those because it's probably easier for them to use those. Uh, but I don't see anything happening here for the U.S. markets. Uh, let's see. What is your prediction on Riot? Riot. Um, that all depends. Can they get a better uptime in Corsicana? If they can, that's obviously a good thing. That leads to me expecting their stock price to be a lot higher. Uh, but if they can't and they still have the same issues that they have at uh, Rockdale facility where they're curtailing a lot, well, that wouldn't be so good. But them growing, having a facility that's 100% um, immersion cooling, that's a huge thing. The miners will obviously last a lot longer. Uh, they'll operate much better as well. I think that's a good thing. It's obviously been a little bit expensive and timely, but they're doing all the right things, I think, going forward. Uh, let's see. How long does the having last? I mean, the having is done for. Uh, it's going to last for the next four years, roughly. And then at that point, we're going to get another having event. And at that point, we're going to have... What is it going to be 1.5 something, 1.6 something Bitcoin in rewards? So at that point, we really do need uh, the transaction fees to kind of get in there as well. Uh, let's see. Okay, briefly, can you explain how higher BTC fees affect miners and BTC price? Well, the BTC fees don't ex uh, affect the BTC price. Uh, the way that the BTC fees ex uh, affect the miners is right now the block reward is at 3.125. So if you add on on top of that another one BTC because of the fees on there, now the miners are getting 4.125. So it's basically, was it, 33% more, right? That's a huge increase in revenue for them. Uh, whereas before, what we typically saw was a couple of percentage points, two to maybe 4% on average throughout the month. Uh, we saw some spikes, obviously, to like 10%, uh, 20% in December of last year. But other than that, it's been pretty low on that side of things because We've had pretty high uh, subsidy reward, which is the Bitcoin block reward. Uh, but going forward, those BTC fees are going to uh, mean a lot more revenue for them than they other, otherwise would have had. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Queen Spark and Mara, do you know their why their electricity fees is so high? Do you have do they have a plan to reduce the cost, or is it as is? Thanks. Uh, okay, so Marathon fees or the fee on electricity was relatively high because they were 
majority before the last couple of months, they were hosting all their machines. So they were paying electricity and hosting fees on top of it. So that's why they were like 6.5 cents, like 7 cents per uh, kilowatt hour. Uh, Clean Spark is a little bit higher because they operate in the communities where the communities actually uh, buy the electricity for the citizens and the uh, local businesses as well. And then they get taxed, uh, well, they get a small percentage of that being added onto it. So it's been a huge boom, obviously, for Clean Spark um, getting into these communities because then these communities see that they are a boom for them. And then you got other communities asking Clean Spark to come into their communities because now at those communities, people are saying that they're lowering their um, property taxes, right? They're getting better schools or getting better um, playgrounds, things like that. That's helping out the community, which I think is great. Um, so that's kind of the way things are right now. Let's see, I'm looking for another question. Uh, okay, here we go. What is the top three most undervalued miners and what your current take on cores and riot is? Um, the three most undervalued right now, um, you could probably, use, I would throw in there bid farms, iron, cores. Uh, I would also throw in there Cypher and Terrawolf as well, all right? Now, as far as what are my takes on cores and riot? A riot is undervalued because of their operations in uh, Rockdale, right? If they can fix those issues in course kind of facility, get newer miners in Rockdale as well, which they've stated that's part of the issue for their uh, uptime there. If they can fix all those things, they should do much better. With cores, cores just got out of Chapter 11 bankruptcy, right? Um, there's always a sour taste in people's mouths uh, when you're dealing with bankruptcies and things like that. So I think it's just going to take a little time for cores to get appreciated for what they actually are providing into the Bitcoin mining space because they are, after Marathon, as far as Bitcoin's being uh, mined, they're the number two or even number one, uh, depending on how Marathon operates. Right? If Marathon's operating at 60%, uh, Riot's at, uh, sorry, core, core is at number one spot then because they mine more. Uh, so I think they should be valued much higher, but because we have the warrants out there that will dilute shares as well, there's a concern there. So I think it just needs time, but I think they will get eventually appreciated for what they are. Uh, but in the meantime, they're out of bankruptcy. That's the reason why. Looking for another question. Uh, what is probably cost of mining BTC if BitFarms achieves 12x the hash by Q2 and 17x by Q3? Oh, gosh, I'd have to run the numbers on that, but they would definitely be lower than where they are right now. I would say probably closer to 60, 55,000 per BTC, something like that. I don't know exactly where. I'd have to run the numbers on it. Let's see. Uh, are fees paid in actual Bitcoins to the miners or in cash? Uh, BTC. So BTC, are, BTC fees are in BTC. Uh, so they get those. So uh, depending on the pool that they're in, so like Marathon, for example, Marathon has their own pool. So if Marathon mined any of the blocks, which they haven't, I haven't seen them mine any of the blocks here recently. Uh, I'm looking at the chart here. So if we look at this here, right. So if you see here, these are the pools that are mining. them. if you had Marathon mining any of these here, you would have like in this one, Marathon would get basically 12.6 BTC here for that block. That's huge. Uh, so they would get all of that. Other companies that have are part of pools, uh, I think, which are majority of them. I don't know which everyone uses, but I think a lot of people use Foundry Pool. They would get a percentage of that, obviously, based on their network hash rate or their hash rate added to the pool. They would get a percentage of that. Okay, uh, so that's kind of how the way it would work out. But that would still obviously be a big help to them as well. Okay, uh, let's see. Here. Uh, what is your price prediction for Marathon 2024-2025? That depends on Marathon as far as if they can fix their uptime, right? Uh, last three months haven't been great. If they can resurrect their uptime uh, to be closer to like 90%, 95%, even closer to 100%, I think the stock is going to do very well. They're obviously the biggest miner here right now. And then we'll obviously have to see their growth. But the problem with their growth is we don't know where their growth is going to be because Fred is unfortunately being kind of uh, keeping that information close to himself. Uh, uh, like I said, unfortunately. So we don't know where they're going to be growing to uh, at this point. But I think they can do very, very well. They can fix those issues. 
Uh, question. Mars CEO has stated that their break-even mining price is around 45000 I believe you're estimated that they need... Uh, it's not that high. It's right around... Let me take a look at it. Marathon. Well, close. 78000 is what I'm guessing at. And that's based on... Uh, I believe Marathon is using 100% uptime, right? For their numbers. I'm using like 75% uptime right now based on December, January, and February uptime numbers for them as far as uh, efficiency is concerned. So that's obviously going to decrease or increase your... Uh, break-even price for Bitcoin because you're not operating at full potential, right? So that's kind of where things are kind of looking at there. And then if there's any, there might be some disparities, dis, dis, disparities in what they provided as far as what I numbers, what the numbers I have on like what's actual cash costs, right? If there's any issues between that, that might kind of offset things a little bit. So that's kind of where I'm at on it. And that's kind of why. Uh, let's see any tips on short t- uh, short-term gain tax? Talk to your accountant or uh, tax professional. I'm not that person there. Any thoughts on Hive? Hive, I've had Hive since 2017, 2018. I held on to it through the bull run in 2021. That was my mistake. I sold them in back in November, December of last year. And that's because I didn't see any growth going forward from them as far as hash rate where I saw some of the other miners, um, Iron, M- CleanSpark, Marathon, Riot, right? Um, so I sold those, I sold Hive then. I still made some profit on it, but it wasn't as great as the profit I could have had when Bitcoin was at 69000 Everybody was saying Bitcoin's going to 100000 Um Had I sold then, I would have done a lot better. But, you know, lesson learned. You learn by through your own mistakes. Let's see. Course price target right now, um, much, much higher than where they should be. They should be at least 3 to 4x, if not higher than that. Uh, if you account for the dilution, that's going to be a part of the warrants as well. I would say three to four X would probably be a fair spot for them right now compared to the other miners that are in the same spot with them uh, as far as hash rate and all those things. Okay. Uh, let's see. Can Wolf fund future A6 with free cash flow and not have to dilute much? Uh, interesting enough, Patrick was in a space with me earlier today through uh, Luxor space. And he stated that um, they're not looking to dilute right now because where the stock price is, right? They don't see it as beneficial to the uh, shareholders, which is good. Um, they will dilute if price goes up much higher, I'm guessing, right? So that would help them fund growth going forward. But in the meantime, they're kind of using, uh, they have the debt to pay off first, right? Which they're working to do that. And I think after that point, they'll kind of see where things are going and figure things out. Let's see. Do you think Bitfarms will be looking for a new CEO from smaller miners that may go out of business? Um, no. I don't think so. Um, um, you know, there's there's a reason why the smaller miners are smaller miners. I mean, I'm not saying it's because of the CEO, but I'm just saying that it could be because of the capital markets and things like that. They don't, just don't have access to capital as easily. Uh, but I think they're looking for somebody that has experience, somebody that has experience probably in overseas markets as well as overseas experience in building infrastructure, electric electricity, things like that. Especially since Bed Farmers is in Argentina, Paraguay. Canada, United States, um, you know, so they want to have somebody that has a pretty wide uh, breadth of knowledge as far as those jurisdictions are concerned, maybe. Let's see. Uh, who mined the first stat- set after having? That was, let me take a look at it. Where is it at? That was Brains Pool after that, uh, looks like. VIBTC actually mined the having block. And then Brains Pool was the next one after that. Let's see. Who would you bet on to perform the best this year in your order? Bitfarms, Iron, CleanSpark, uh, BitDigital, Cypher, and Mara. Well, that's a tough question. Uh, you know, any one of these guys can flounder, or not flounder, can make a mistake, not get to where they're supposed to be getting it to. Um, it also depends on what you're looking at as far as uh Performance-wise, uh, are you talking about market share? Are you talking about price appreciation side of things? Uh, I would expect them all to do really well. There might be some that do better than others, but overall, they all should do really well. Okay. All right. I think I cut up to all you guys' questions. So I don't see anything else being added here. So we'll leave it at that. Uh, again, thank you so much for coming in to watch this. This was a fun day today with the having event happening. Uh, we'll have another one in four years. Uh you know, we didn't really have this kind of space before where we had the having event, we had the, in 2020, 
We didn't have the Twitter spaces to talk about it, to have miners on at that point, to talk about what they see going forward, what they're doing now. It's a, it's a much better time frame to be more informed with the miners, not only what's going on with Bitcoin, but the miners themselves. And I think it's going to be only better going forward. So I appreciate you guys coming in to watch this. I hope you guys stick around through the bull run that we are going to possibly have here coming up here in the next 12 to 18 months. And then hopefully you guys stick around for the bear market if we have it. I don't know if we're going to have it. Uh, but I think the best is still yet to come with all these miners. And it's going, to, it's going to be interesting to see how they grow going forward, how they build out. Um, and we're obviously going to be looking for alpha where we can see things are going to be a little bit maybe undervalued where they shouldn't be. And we'll obviously talk about it at that point. But again, thank you so much for coming in to watch this video. Hope you guys have a wonderful weekend, wonderful Friday night, wonderful Friday having night. Maybe one of these days we'll have, or one of these years, we'll have actually a like a holiday, Bitcoin having holiday. Um, it might only last 100 some 40 years, but it'd be kind of interesting to have that. All right, but that is it. I hope you guys have a great one. I'll see you guys uh, possibly tomorrow. We'll see what happens. We'll look at the miners, how they did against Bitcoin this past week. And then tomorrow I'm going to be joining Anthony and Bryce on their channel in the morning at 11 Central Standard Time. We're going to do a live q and I believe, as well to talk about the miners, the having, and all that stuff as well. And then I'll be joining uh, the BTC Mining Guy on Twitter Spaces at 1 p.m. Central Time as well. We'll talk about, obviously, all that's happened here in the past day or so. All right, so that's it. Thank you again. Have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you guys in the next one.